I don't care one way or the other because y'all hippies just need to install the binary drivers like real gamers. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, and news, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, trying to pilot our little nightmare plane, joined every week by the man with a not red shirt, Jordan Swang up in Toronto land, and staying up a little less late this week because the time changed One. on him. On the Isles of Britannia, <laughs> one Pedro Mateus together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form, you know him, Cocaine Voltron. Let's talk about that dragon shirt, baby. Yeah, it's dragon shirt. Um, uh -huh. oh, oh, You've oh, got gee. to Shiva and back and survived. <laughs> oh, I should not accept this level of bullshit. You brought that shirt like three times during the first show. So I did. I like, I, I like the shirt. I want it's, to it's appreciate a, it too. It's it's a Melissa Benson piece. It's the the Shivan Dragon art from Alpha Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's always been one of my favorite cards just because it has a really cool art. And I found out that she sells shirts with like Nightmare and Lord of Atlantis and shit on Zazzle. I was I tried to find a Necropodens shirt because that's also one of my favorite cards. But um, from back in the day, but they don't. They don't Do they have, have like that. foil shirts? <laughs> you could probably you could probably get it in foil. It's not, it's going to be very uncomfortable though. Maybe, maybe give you some like weird metal slippers probably don't want to go to sleep in a microwave <laughs> i mean generally you don't want to go to sleep in a microwave unless you're a burrito fair how about you mr time hasn't changed over there yet Mateus? <laughs> yeah the next three uh shows are going to be an hour earlier for me because yeah uh, daylight savings doesn't kick in till the 31st over here on gmt so i look forward to it um I did go um, yesterday at around lunchtime. I went to Cambridge City Center to get my eyes checked. And uh, because I've been getting the uh, astigmatism headaches. So they they went through all the well, things. They like measured astigmatism. My, I'm always like, Argh. not, not well, the stigma. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you know, I, I think of the ill will press foamy the squirrel thing where it's like, yeah, I have eye stigmata. And he's just like, shoot, shoot yes. his blood out of his eyes. <laughs> So yeah, I uh, I'm I'm getting new glasses in two weeks apparently. So uh, about the time that um, the uh, clock changes, <laughs> I got a new toy that could take down the entire show tonight, but I don't think it will. Uh, we are currently at 48 degrees centigrade, which is my mm. new um, yeah, it's, uh, it's my manglement of centigrade and Celsius. What is that? It's someone, yes. <laughs> You, you, just, you just gotta just use Kelvin. That, that's that's all we think, gotta do. I gotta think. Look, Jordan. It's a big. It's a box. It's a brown box, though. That means ah, it costs a lot. It's it's made by Germans, Austrians, Austrians. How right. Dare. <laughs> Same How thing. Dare. Oh, Austria oh, oh, equals. Like, yeah, I mean, let's right. go back a few years and you can Austria, say it's the same thing. Austria, you know, you know. I'm gonna be more controversial. Austria and Australia are the same place. Fight me. <laughs> Literally indistinguishable. <laughs> you uh, can't this tell is the difference. The NHP one. You might know about it because I said uh, somebody talked me out of buying this thing. No fan on it. Completely passive heatsink for AM4, AM5, or whatever you were brave enough to stick it on. Which uh, you know, I stuck it on Jackbox. There it is. This is a chalker. There is RAM hiding under that man. Mm. Like that. That to get the size of this thing um in the right hand corner there that's the fiber card plugged into the by 16 the first by 16 slot oh you should have bought a banana uh, <laughs> nanometers son or like <laughs> separating this it barely had clearance on it just enough where i felt comfortable and um those I've are some thick fins though uh, they're not even thins they're more like plates man okay yeah i mean they're they're you know, you need the thermal mass. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have thought it would have been like crazy finny to like maximize surface area, but like, I guess so. It, I think it's more about like uh, the potential that it can hold, mm. you know, like heat so soak or whatever you want to call it. Um, mm. I done some tests with it. I got a little video. I'll have that out. I'll put it up early for patrons and I'll put it out on uh, interfacing Linux later on, probably next week. But I've been doing some testing with it, kernel compiles. I want to see what it does. And but it, it had a very interesting side effect, though, because you know, no fan on it. It uses convection to, you know, magically transmit heat up. I don't. Nobody knows how that works. Uh, but 
I put it in Jackbox and I got it all tightened down, ran it. Somehow it managed to make the fan on the power supply really loud. Because before I couldn't hear it. Now I can hear it. So <laughs> I'm, this has magical powers to make power supply fans louder. Has the magical power of uh, reducing the noise floor. Now you can hear everything else. I think it's haunted. <laughs> I mean, I mean, would would does does the ghost improve the cooling or does it like make the thing run hotter? That's what I want to know. I don't like, know. When, when, whenever it's just like, oh, it's haunted, but like, yeah, but what does the ghost actually do? Does it improve the functionality or does it make it worse? Because I want to keep the ghost if it makes it run faster, right? Yeah, like, dude, I'm not going to voluntarily let you have my ghost. <laughs> But it is a thing. I mean, it does work. And uh, to what degree, uh, you'll find out along with, I'll do a little write-up for it. And, to, uh, to what degree Celsius? Yeah, uh, Thermo Feats. Uh, oh, I do want to give a shout-out to, um, I, I tried to buy this a month ago. And uh, like right when I was, because like when I talked about it on the show, like that, uh, about a week later, I'm like, yo, I'm just going to go pick this up. And I went to get it off the wish list, and I got the wish list set where it doesn't spoil surprises, and I tried to order it. And it's like, you no, know, you cannot order it. I'm like, neat, because I know what that means. <laughs> and like, I waited three weeks. Then I waited four weeks. And I'm like, all right, fuck. Then I, because I don't, didn't want two of them, right? I didn't want to order one and have one show up. Contacted Amazon customer support. And they're like, yeah, somebody fucking ordered it, but it looks like they've scheduled a refund for it. I'm like, okay, I'll just, can I just have that one? And they're like, here you go. Problem solved. But thank you. <laughs> mysterious person <laughs> whoever attempted to and maybe you ordered it for yourself i don't know because i've had that happen to how about something that will never be passively cooled no only liquid helium can tame the ferocity the thermal load of the horse i mean you just gotta mix it together right it's a nice little cocktail it's well i wouldn't call it refreshing i would call it the steam Sale. Oh man! Again, man. Is is it is it Imagine Dragons who sings that song? Or I don't I don't know. I don't know. A Wall Nation. A Wall Nation is the is 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 is. is, I'm I'm glad I was able to pull that out of my ass. We owe them a lot of money, but not as much money as Steam will make during the spring (laughs) sale, where there are a bunch of unimpressive sales. But you know, there's there's some good shit here, like um. My picks are Citizen Sleeper and Inscription are 12 and 10 bucks, respectively. So you should grab those if you don't any of them. I grabbed some Solasta, the Crown of the Magister DLC for cheap because I wanted the Barbarian and the Monk class. Um, Deathloop was 15 bucks, and that looks kind of interesting. And Midnight Suns refuses to drop below 20 bucks because fucking Firaxis, I want my Marvel dating sim card game, and I want it now. <laughs> yeah, I only had, uh, of the 43 games that are in my wish list, 10 were 50% or more off, which is better than the winter sale. So good on them. But yeah, there's two uh, that are under five pounds. One's a DLC for Kingdoms of Amalur Re Reckoning. And um, the other one is for Dread Templar, which is Boomer Shooter, which I probably will end up picking up. <laughs> so yeah, no, it is. Um, ooh, Left 4 Dead 2 is 99 cents. Oh, I finished downloading. There you go. Aha. Speaking of. <laughs> No, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm on the show, too. I'm looking for more stuff. I've been trying to give <laughs> Valve some money, ladies and gentlemen. I have, man. I, I got all the way to, like, page four on this, like, 85, 90% off. But I started. I, I, was, I was, like, going through, like, mo- like because uh, SteamDB has, like, the most cheap, cheapest of all time or, like, that, that, that kind of thing. So I was just right. looking to see, like, what, what, is, what, what is at a new low price? Is anything, like, at that level? I'm like, oh, there's not much, is there? Well, I mean, I started, like, 30 40% off, and I think a lot of us, uh, we don't really keep that tight a track of what's on sale on Steam. But you get that email notifications, like, things on your wish list are on sale. I'm like, all right, let's go see. And I didn't see anything impressive. However, we knew, have a new all-time low of um, It Takes Two at nine ninety nine. They learned how not to make that fourteen ninety nine or possibly fifteen ninety nine. But yeah, a bunch of 30 and 40% off stuff that I would buy, but I'm not because I, I think about it like this. Like one of the curses of getting just a wee older is just developing hella patience and just refining oh, yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> no hurry. <laughs> yeah, to the point of like, I can wait you out now. I got other stuff I need to go do. And like, I will come back to you 
when you're the appropriate price. Now we talked about in the pre-pre super shows and go back and listen to that if you're one of our beautiful party patrons about the Insta buy price, which $9.99 and lower. I'm just going to buy it. If it's something that I've kind of had my eye on, I'm like nine bucks, fine. My, if I really want it Insta buy price, which is rare, maybe once or twice a year is 20 bucks. What's yours, Jordan? What, what is your, fuck it, I'm just going to buy it. In, Insta, Insta buy for me is five bucks. Uh, but like if, 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 I, if I wanted it, like 10 to 15 is kind of that range. Depends mm-hmm. on like how bad and how recent. No, I but think no. that's really relevant because when I am on the Steam store and I, I always click the special thing if I just happen to be there and I will sort like 15. That's where I put my slider. It's like 15 bucks, little man. Yeah. Put that shit in my hand if that money doesn't show. Then you owe oh, me. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Pedro Mateus? Uh, apparently <laughs> it's three pound 50. You're like <laughs> too rich for my blood. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I think the first game that I remember just buying because it was stupid cheap on Steam was uh, Stalker uh, Shadow of Chernobyl because it was four euros. <laughs> it was like four years like, oh, I want that game. And it's only four years like done. <laughs> now, let's talk I- about patience, though. Well, I, 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 I wanted to cycle back to that, too, because like right. as Linux users, we have an added incentive because, you know, we, we, were, we, were, we were talking a couple weeks ago about the, the wine thing where in some games you get like 400 percent increase in some scenarios. And while that's yeah, there's some nuance to that. But like, you know, sometimes a year goes by and then the Mesa guys are like, yeah, we cracked this thing. And now this game just runs at like nine billion frames a second. And so, you know, n- now it's worth DXVK. it to go look at a game. Yeah. Ever since it started supporting DX9, DX9 games tend to run a lot better in Vulkan than native DX9, because Vulkan can use more CPU threads. <laughs> and then we just got things like um, F-Sync being in, you know, Kernel 6.6 and above, which, which turned like Trackmania 2020 completely playable on Threadripper, where I, something about the Threadripper architecture, even with 3060s, just didn't like it. F-Sync sorts it, now it just plays like a regular game. But what I want to get to is impulse control. We got that down, but let's let's wind the clock back just a little bit. Let us know. Leave a comment. What was the last game that you bought on day one? You paid the iron price, 59, 49, 69, whatever it was. What was it? Because you do remember. You just got to think back. Uh, on release, I think it was Skyrim. You cheap bastard. It probably, yeah. <laughs> for, for me, it probably would have been one of the Pokemons because we're not restricting it to like PC games, but like. I think for this one, we need to restrict it to Steam. To Steam? Okay. Yeah. That, that, that one I'm struggling to remember. Mine um, was, uh, I remember mine because it made me mad after uh, the last two I bought Sony titles because I wanted not necessarily to look out of war. I wanted to play it because I had Tilk on it. Mm. And that uh, data it, bullet. Yeah, dude. And like, I was like, I'll listen to that, dude. Uh, <laughs> it didn't perform all that well because it's a Sony title. I didn't learn my lesson. Then the uh, Spider Man Remastered came out, and I was just giving Sony money to send them a message of like more PC ports, period. And uh, that game, like seven months later, got playable. But yeah, outside of that, before those games, I couldn't tell you, man. Last oh, time I. No, I, I did buy one. Okay. The Dark Souls Remaster. I bought that day one on release. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe one of the, maybe Darkest Dungeon 2, but someone might have bought that for me. Yeah, I, I don't know. It all kind of blurs together for the past couple of years, too. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard. Oh, <laughs> what man. do you mean? We're not in 2020 anymore. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Valve reaching a new official Steam Deck compatible game. Milestone? Milestone? Mile, milestone? Yeah, call, call, Kilometer Rock. Yeah, so uh, according to PC Games N, links all this stuff is in our show notes, 14,000 games are now considered uh, compatible for the Steam Deck. They are, they are uh, play, playable or above. And yeah, we don't, we don't need no stinking Switch games. We got, we got plenty of games. We have most of the games that are available on the Switch store, minus a couple of like the Nintendo exclusives. Um, and yeah, uh, one one other one other thing um that is kind of interesting 39 th- or 3924 games are just outright considered to be whole wholehearted unsupported don't try to play them on the steam deck and i was thinking that is actually like one of the uh one of the big value adds for like the steam deck versus the rog or the legion is that valve is going out of their way to flag games that run well on the handheld 
and going out of their way to like make the experience better, which is something that their competition just really isn't doing. How much confusion do you think that leads to people like, oh, well, I got the Windows handheld. I can apply that list to this thing. Oh, why is it on fire? Right. Like, yeah, no, I'm using Windows on my handheld, so it'll play everything. And then they try to start. It's like, oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. When you, like, when you think about this, though, uh, with those deck digits, 14,000 games, uh, verified playable TM, because we know there's some, there's some wiggle room there's, in there, there's man. Yeah. Yeah. E- even the unsupported ones, a few of them were. Someone hacked Alex to run on a Steam Deck. We, we don't recommend you do it, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You, you can. Yeah, you, you can if you really want to. We, uh, there's room for some vagary in that. But speaking of that, man, uh, in the article, uh, the dude says, I mourn the day deck verified comes to the end. The fuck you talking about? I don't think that's that's happening. That's that's how yeah. you tell people to buy buy games for your console. Is like th- yeah. these are the good ones to work. <laughs> go go there. Well, yeah, I don't. And think as I'm... it turns out, the deck's pretty popular. Yeah, a couple of people <laughs> bought one, man. And Proton, we we got we got to give it all the props because Proton has absolutely went from like we were all here on that day one. We're like, the fuck is this? And now, okay, yeah. I remember the first thing that day. I downloaded a uh, Bioshock. Well, I already had Bioshock because it was in a bundle. And I was able to play it with like just clicking a button. We didn't have like shader pre-caching at the time, but like just click a button down and the performance was playable. It's come a long way. When, it's, so, it's, it's, it's so weird seeing normies just post pictures of their Steam decks. It's yeah. great. I mm-hmm. love it, man. Uh, in no small part because of that play button, that Proton, that little wine project that Valve did and that has led to the Steam Deck. Like that's only second to probably the least talked about but biggest advantage that the steam deck has over all windows handheld gaming systems from everybody is gamescope because you're typically dealing with you know you need to you want 900p gamescope can do that it doesn't give the game an option it's like look at me i'm the system now you're going to be on the display you don't have to worry about ordered window lists and jumping in and out and all tabbing it's like it's there it can give it the options, whatever options it wants, but it's always going to render at whatever resolution you tell it to render. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Gamescope is amazing in that respect. Oh, the game can only render in 1024 by 768. And Gamescope goes, okay, here's the, uh, the draw surface. Draw your 1024 by 768. I'll figure out the rest. And That's it puts huge when you're dealing on screen. Yeah. Like, I call it like when I'm using Gamescope on the desktop, that's when I'm like, okay, I need to put this game in obey me mode. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there, there are a ton of games that like their windowing shit is busted. And yeah. it's just like, mm-hmm. no, this, this is where you run now. This, this little window. Let's be honest. Their, their windowing shit's not busted on Linux. Their windowing shit's just busted. Yeah. It's the game. It's the, that, that one's 100% bustedness. the game. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to um, a little bit of arithmetic. We're going to count to 100. Da, 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 Top 100 da, 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 games da, 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 sorted, da, da, according to Valve, uh, by highly, uh, high, bleh, highly, no, highest daily player count on the Steam Deck, uh, which is, yeah, it's, it's the top 100 games uh, of, on the Steam Deck from March 2023 to March 2024. And Baldur's Gate 3 leads by what I'm guessing to be a fairly significant margin, Two. because <laughs> right below that is uh, Vampire Survivors, of course. Uh, Elden Ring comes in at number five, followed Dude, by Legally Distinct. we gotta see how far distinct. we can get down before we get to, what, what's gonna be the first game of, like, get the fuck out of here? <laughs> Pal World? <laughs> Immediately below okay, Elden yeah, all right, Ring. get the fuck out of here. All right, fair. Uh, <laughs> Legally well, Distinct Pokemains, for now. <laughs> uh, everything looks like... Fine, and what I, what I mean by that is like something that just wouldn't be a really good experience on the Steam Deck. And Skyrim uh, at number thirteen, Sky, dude. Skyrim's like twenty three years old now. It should be. No, no, horrible. that's the, yeah. the that's the DX eleven version. So it's a little yeah, newer. Okay, nineteen years old. Uh, Monster Hunter. Uh, you know that Spider Man game probably runs like ass on the deck, but hey, it's compatible. Fallout Four, maybe that's pretty old. Well, and like 2015, oh, oh, that's a year before the new Skyrim. <laughs> oh, a lot of the stuff like the Baldur's Gate 3, the Red Dead Redemptions, Hollow Knight, Elden Ring, all that shit, it, uh, Cyberpunk makes sense because these are huge fucking games that take forever to finish. And just being able to like pick, pick them up, up at any at, and play, play a little bit and then put it down is huge for getting people to be actually able to like play their games, which is which is which is a thing that I think gets uh, overlooked quite a bit with the Steam Deck is like. De- definitely when I when I need to game, it's like, oh, I can come downstairs and set up my PC and turn it on, sit down and blah, blah, blah. Or I can pick up the Steam Deck and just 
sit in bed or on the couch. And that is the definitely a way you need to look at it, though, because even if it's not the highest fidelity experience, it's better than nothing. Yeah, like exactly. If you just need to pick something up, right? And being it's- able to put the deck to sleep while you're playing a game, because you can't do that shit on Windows. <laughs> Project Zomboy. So let's, let's what, go what, ahead. When are they, they going to bring that to Steam, man? When can I just like pause the game in Steam? Legal and just- company. Oh, dude, don't give my ideas, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the last, the, the least played of the top 100, all the way down to the bottom. You know what you love at a blast from the past? Something you might remember from 2015. Rocket League. A game we used to play the absolute snot of before Epic bought a sign. Was it Cynosis or Cygnosis? Cyonix, Cy- yeah. Cyonix, one of the P ones. And uh, they're like, LOL, no more Linux support. Why? Reasons. Because Timmy doesn't like Linux. But we'll get well, to that. Yeah, uh, hold, hold, hold your horses, Pedro. We, we, got, we, got, we still got a ways to go. We got at least one more story to talk about. How about VKD3D? Uh, dash Proton. Not to be confused with regular ordinary VKD3D. No, no, no. They got a little bit of an update. Version 2.12. The big one I wanted to point out here, is they have implemented NVIDIA Reflex. Which is interesting because that's the super low latency stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. They hacked around. No, they didn't hack around that. NVIDIA showed up and like, here, let's do it for you. Here's how you do it. Because NVIDIA hates Linux. Right, guys? <laughs> right? All right? Total they line, love money. AMD. Ooh, <laughs> Team Red. Yes. Because sure, AMD, AM, AMD uh, jumps uh, in and helps all the fucking time. Listen, right. in, uh, Intel, Intel is the one that's paying for my shilling, so you get right. none of that. Okay. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit that um, I never expected NVIDIA to fix a bug with the original Linux release of Neverwinter Nights, mm-hmm. and yet they did. The very next uh, driver version for the 1080 at the time, they had fixed the cloak issue that I was having, and... I honestly can't fault them for that at all, while at the same time, AMD just straight up ignored all of my bug reports for FGLRX, so fuck AMD. There's some other stuff in this release as well. Uh, They're enabling uh, Shader Model uh, 6.7 globally, and also they had some work for enabling uh, Shader Model 6.7 on Pascal as well. And I wonder, will this at all help with the the XL performance on the 10 series? Or will this just let you run shit with Shader Modern 6, 7, the latter. period? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Ooh. going all the way back to Pascal's like, yeah, you can, you can try it if you want. We're not going to I paid $1,000 for that card back in the yeah, day. Right. I, I, I don't want to, I want to throw it out. It's e Uh And also, uh, if you play, if you really like Persona 3 Reloaded, no more ray tracing for you. Sorry. Mm. Wah, wah. And they're uh, for our brothers and sisters that are still have a nice firm crippling addiction to world of warcraft uh, they fixed that gpu hang with your mssa enabled so mm. oh yeah no uh ray tracing for your uh for sonas yeah uh, yeah no that know. gets disabled by default it's probably a good idea uh, um elden ring they introduced uh ray tracing a while back and i turned it on and i struggled to find the difference, except for the frame rate. <laughs> do, 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 do they call it Eldrin, Elden Ray Tracing? Uh, the, the, they just have a ray tracing option. You can set different levels. Every and game I that I've cut RT on, um, I've had that same experience. Like, go, I'll cut it on like a little bit, and I'm like, maybe? Yeah, yeah no, I, I went through all the different levels to see if I could see anything and the only thing i saw was the frame rate yeah. counter dropping <laughs> that's the only way you know it's on right you're like <laughs> the game runs worse yeah yes <laughs> tim uh, sweeney from epic had a little bit of a rant like what 30 years ago 20 years ago uh 2018 so uh, six yeah, years so ago. about 20 years ago <laughs> yeah 20 years ago yeah, uh, no, there was, uh, because of the Wolfire case against Valve, about the 30%, um, because Epic didn't sue Valve for the 30%, it'd be kind of weird, uh, but Wolfire decided, you know what, we're going to do it. So there's discovery has been going on, and um, some emails that Team Sweeney has sent uh, to Valve in uh, 2018 have now surfaced, and uh, they're... Um, <laughs> They're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I just want to call him Weenie from now on because he's just whining through the whole thing. Uh, one of the examples is, right now, you assholes are telling the world that the strong and powerful get special terms, while 30% is for the little people. 
we're all uh, we're all in for the prolonged battle if Apple tries to keep their monopoly in 30% by cutting backroom deals with big publishers to keep them quiet. He was talking about this in 2018. That's how far back he was uh, working on the little stunt that he pulled that got his account uh, or the entire Epic developer account nuked from the Apple store. And uh, you know what? I have a bit more respect for the big weenie himself for calling Valve assholes to their faces. Absolutely. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with his reasoning or a lot of what he says, uh, but I will respect that one instance of his behavior there. Good job. Yeah. And like, <laughs> it, I mean, reading through all that, it's very clear Tim is positioning himself as the little guy. Poor tiny Tim. With, with his, crying with his into build. his loads of yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, but because he's getting slightly less money. But, you know, he does, ra- you know, broken work clock is right twice a day. You you can raise a good point. And I think these days, 30% cut is kind of high. We do get cool shit like the Steam Deck and Proton. But, like, they, what, Val- Valve ran some analysis. They were, like, we're the most efficient company on the planet. They're mm-hmm. making money hand over foot. They could maybe look at giving some more favorable terms to the developers. They could and they should, but they won't because money... But they, but they should. I think they're in a position where they. I think you can also should. balance that out as like Valve's not having layoffs. Yes, they're not having layoffs, and um, they're not making games, but they are using that thirty percent for something. Steam Deck. <laughs> they're using it for a lot of stuff. Now I said this is a very easy solution. Like if you don't want a thirty percent cut, I believe Valve should have a scrub tier. Like all right, uh, we take ten percent cut. You get a store. Store. Page. That's, it. That's it. You get a shopping cart <laughs> on your page. You don't get uh, all the other crap. You don't get the forums. You don't get the feedback. You don't get the, all the no community tools. hub, no yeah. trading cards, no achievements, no, no, no workshop. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no you know, they, they, they can throw a workshop in just, 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 just for, just to be generous. And they probably would too, but yeah. um, the, it's 30%. I would say this is where we got to get squishy with it too, because like if it was Epic charge, if it, if you got everything that you got from the Epic store for 30%, you'd be like, fuck no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no the charge. Uh, Epic's charging what? 12%. Okay. So for 12%, give people an option. You get the exact same thing that you'd get on the Epic store, which is fuck all. <laughs> and here's another thing. Um, but no, you, you get a check from Epic when, when they yeah. give away your game for free. That's, that's what you get. And like for, for the 12% tier, you don't get to generate Steam keys. Yeah, no Steam keys. Uh, yeah, yeah no, th- no Steam th- works integration, nothing. I, I think he, I think even, I think even bumping it down to 20%, they could still make a healthy profit because there's so many games on Steam. Like the, the scale at which it operates, I can't, I can't imagine that like that would be that damaging. It probably wouldn't, but you run into the thing of like, you know, like this works for us. We're, we're right, well, yeah, and, and again, they're, they're going to say no, because money, we're all, we're all filthy rich. Why would we stop being filthy rich to make other people filthy rich? Right? And like They're like, well, we're privately owned or it's just us. Yeah. We don't have fucking investors or stakeholders yeah, or anything no like no that. No investors. And it's like, y'all no bitches want the Steam Deck to or not? Because you know how many nothing. billions of dollars it's going to take to make that bitch? We got custom printed silicon for Steam Deck. Think that's cheap? Rock up to AMD and say, give me the custom chip. Yeah, yeah, walking up to a (laughs) CPU manufacturer, like, make me a CPU. And not just, you know, random uh, CPU from down the street. It was already the company that was making the PS4 and the Xbox One, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Yeah, (laughs) as it turns out, (laughs) uh, Valve has that kind of pulling power. and. I really think they could, uh, to agree with Jordan, like they could lower that, but, uh, I think it would be more in line to like, and they don't want to create confusion either. I, I get that too, but like have a different tier, have a different tier. Yeah. Like, ha- yeah. Have, have an option. Like, yeah. Give people the options. Like, okay. The Epic store charges 12% for, to have a store page and that's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what you get. I, I mean, yeah, my, my, my perspective of it is I just want more money going to the people who are actually like making the games. Uh, and the, and in a lot of the cases, this is just indie indies that have like not a huge team that are maybe like two or three people, maybe one person. And yeah, like, and there's I, something I, to be said, yeah. like having your game like on itch.io, like places where you're going to get a better percentage and, you but, know, but then, 
and and like and but people you're like discover- discovery but like discovery is yeah. absolute dog shit on steam like you can't really drag yeah. that out you're just there because everybody you know, like might as well just put it on steam too yeah yeah i mean that that that's kind of how it goes but, but, the but moment any kind of platform the gets any kind right? of traction like, yeah because I mean, uh, people used to say that the Switch store was great because, yeah, you you had that discoverability because there were infinitely less games than there were on Steam. And then Nintendo kind of went, ooh, people like these indies, and they opened the floodgates a little bit, and now discoverability on the Switch is shit. Go figure. <laughs> oh, like, oh, just, just, I, I want to bring this up just because, like, this is this is very, it's complete bullshit. You know how bundles are organized on the Switch? is that the, you download a game, which is a packed binary of all the other games. So if you get, like, duplicates... Yes. You could, you could, you could, <laughs> that don't necessarily share save. So if you get, like, Final Fantasy Collections Part 1 and Part 2, and they both have Final Fantasy 4 in it, you gotta make sure you remember which, uh, which bundle you're playing out of, because otherwise you're gonna be very upset. Maybe. Like, that, 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 that's some boo-boo. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about one game up date and it's it's not what was it what was the race name tom tim oh uh there there, there are a couple there was todd todd yeah yeah <laughs> for uh, all, all the early seasons ones were apparently named after members of kiss so there was gene there was ace there was a couple others todd was the uh yeah todd was the rave character well the the heart of gold yeah he's like i was like oh yeah they have a sense of humor no they're they're just regular guys they just people but we're not talking about wraiths. We're talking about wrath, and of evil, uh, or and of ruin, as it's called now. Uh, yeah, no, it's. Uh, we talked about it last week or the week before. It's the Dark Places Engine Boomer Shooter that came out a while back, native, um, native Linux release as well, because it's Dark Places. It's the Quake Engine, so. <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah, it got a new update there were there were a couple of issues i ran into while trying to launch the um the native Linux version there were a couple of instances where it just straight up crashed the screen went dark as in the, the window showed up and then gone uh but now they fixed it it launches reliably which is very very good and uh th- they did change um the uh the OpenGL corruption on menu QC, which if you opened up the Steam overlay, and this happened uh, this happened on a Linux version too, if you opened up the Steam overlay uh while you were in the menu, there was you could see like artifacts show up around the uh, entries in the menu. They fixed that now, so it's very nice. Yeah, the there's this is just like a standard post launch bug pa- uh bug fix patch. Yeah. Uh you know, you it, it happens, you know, you're you do your testing, you do your open beta, but then like once it goes live Everyone starts humping all the walls, and then you find all the real oh, bugs. Complete hell, man. Yeah. I, I want to give him credit though, man, because <laughs> yeah. I, I had some good feels when uh, I went like digging through the chain log, and they, they they kept the naming convention for yeah. Quake. Yes, you know E one M one M two, and I was like, oh, I remember punching that in my DSP files and get off my lawn. I'm old. Um, yeah, that, yeah. They've also yeah, released I, the hot I, fix I immediately after this. <laughs> Did they, they call it the hotter fix? <laughs> no, this is just the. To basically the like the OpenGL corruption and the AMD issues that they were having, mm-hmm. they didn't fix all of them, so they had to do a little hot fix to. I would put like little crates on cases. the floor, <laughs> and instead of a uh, nine inch nails, they have like ten inch spikes or some shit. <laughs> or just well, like, hold, hold on, what, 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 what's a, what's a lesser known Trent Reznor man? <laughs> just put the logo. On <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they hire them to do the um. Oh. oh, apparently there was also issues with the, uh, on NVIDIA cards, there were red lines on the screen, which I can remember a few games that, uh, had those, uh, like red textures. Dude, you can of- get wrecked if you generate like <laughs> individual red lines on your monitor. Ah, uh-uh, dude, that is not a happy feel. <laughs> like that, the last thing I was like, oh no, <laughs> so yeah. something's wrong. <laughs> GPU go burr, no more. <laughs> Or monitor cable like out last yeah. time track is like was that the game doing that please be is, the game is, doing is, that is there something wrong with my monitor did yeah. something fuck up it, yeah <laughs> it looks a lot like that <laughs> oh man good to see good to see let's jump into the news with uh our good friends over on oh. team red oh, there speaking of lives. amd software support being <laughs> a bit oh, shit on oh, linux oh. Uh, if you know, uh, you know that little Fallout 4 meme that's just, like, the corner of the screen that says, everyone hated that? 
Yeah, I- imagine that showing up as soon as um cuz there was a bit of a bug reported on the um a DRM for the kernel the not uh digital rights management but the direct rendering manager uh the uh for AMD which caused when someone tried to set the power limit to 150 watts on their 6900 XT mm-hmm. The card, instead of limiting to 150 watts, was boosting as high as 300 or 420 on occasion. And it's like, okay, that's bad. Let's, let's, uh, let's report that bug. And (laughs) one of the developers, um, Mario Limoncello, uh, came back and said, this has been discussed on the AMD GFX mailing list. And the conclusion was that underpowering outside of the bounding box is potentially dangerous and might damage the hardware. This won't be added back in. Close thread won't fix. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, everyone hated that. Everyone wow, came Pedro, down on his a ass. a lot of pages to scroll Immediately. <laughs> like, immediately. I, I, like how, I like how the original bug reporter is, is like, I feel so bad. I just wanted to report a bug. I didn't want to make AMD GPU worse. And the media, media quote, follow post is like, nobody thinks this is your fault. Yeah, this is not your fault. This is absolutely not your fault. But like, but yeah, yeah no. do, doing the exact opposite of the thing you wanted it to do. Yeah, hopefully this gets fixed sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this, is, this is happening on uh, kernel 6.7. If you're on 6.6, you're apparently safe. Which is what I am, so which yeah. is what I'm rocking, so I'm I'm good, um, but yeah, the people, tur- but like the the people in the thread are going about how like yeah, set- setting a pretty aggressive like what setting a 200 watt cap on the card mm-hmm. only like drops performance by about 10 percent and like reduces power usage by like 30. Yeah, and the, as it turns out, it's like uh, someone was given an example with their 6800 XC. Where yeah. uh, they lowered the um, the power target to 150 watts, they lost 10 percent of performance, but they were saving about 30 percent of power. That's significant. That's, that's that's an extra Steam game at the end of the year, right? Yeah, yes. that that's a lot of money at the end of the month. I think and the biggest argument to be made for any of this is if you're dealing with the type of people that know how to fucking do this on Linux, yeah, let them. <laughs> well, and b- beyond that, like. Running less electricity through the card is somehow more dangerous than running more electricity Which through makes the Makes no fucking right. sense. Uh, uh, <laughs> two people that are not electrical engineers. Uh, <laughs> it is dangerous. You can get into states with chips and you can fuck things up, uh, like bot converters, by dropping the voltage too low. You can damage hardware by undervolting it. Yeah, it but you're not ever- undervolting. <laughs> you're not yes, that's I'm one using of the points big he brings up. that you can wrap your head around right now <laughs> yeah no that that's actually one of the points that is brought up in the thread because people were saying yeah if the cards can draw seven watts at idle just fine then what's the problem with capping the power and it's like running at idle and underclocking aren't the same thing it's like yeah no one else was conflating underclocking with idle that person was somebody and, is sitting here going this could be potentially dangerous now we have the internet and we have hardware engineers from fucking amd which uh have on multiple occasions <laughs> proven that uh we they know better don't... internet now <laughs> amd is looking at this going yeah i don't we we don't want a uh a single <laughs> a single card to come back because and yet at the same time, they allow for overclocking. Overclocking's fine. Limiting the power can't do it, but overclocking is overclocking self, overclocking is fine. self-correcting. <laughs> overclocking because there's so protections built this in. Be. <laughs> well, it's fucking not, clearly, according to somebody looked at that and went, that could get fucked up. Um, <laughs> but that's well, the I, thing. I, that's I, a, I, again, I think, another I think, point I think that the, gets brought th- up in the thread. <laughs> and I, I, th- I think the big thing, too, is like AMD and power management are not a thing that go hand in hand. And so people are going to look for ways to reduce the power consumption on oh, the thirsty, and thirsty like, AMD cards. And that, like, that's yeah. like definitely another fucking minefield that you need to keep in mind before fucking around with stuff like this too. You're fucking around with an already bad system. And that one of the proposed solutions was, okay, so let's taint the kernel. If uh, someone enables the uh, feature mask to enable overclocking and setting the power limit, then it should taint the kernel on both setting the power limit and on overclocking, because then it's fair. <laughs> it's, that's that's making... what we need in our drivers, fairness. <laughs> I, 
I mean, if you are going to disallow one because it's too dangerous to set the power limit too low, mm -hmm. while at the same time allowing people to crank the power limit and the voltage and yeah. the clocks on the card, that doesn't make any fucking sense. That makes plenty of sense, because <laughs> there's fail states and throttling built into account that, like, that was done, like, during the design phase of, like, okay, people are going to overclock these things. We need to make sure that they're going to clock down. That we're going to be able to, the traces are going to be able to handle the extra power, da 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 da, -da. They clearly, at some point, were like, what if people are, like, fucking uh, not getting the correct amount of power to that? Could it have problems, like, long-term? Like, oh, yeah, it might. So, yeah, like, fuck fairness. Like, one of those is, like, we have we have contingencies in place in the silicon for the overclocking. This thing, clearly they don't, or at least they firmly believe they don't. I don't care one way or the other, because y'all hippies just need to install the binary drivers like real gamers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, and, and, and again, part of, part of the response from AMD is like, no, they should they should come up with a better way of solving this problem. They shouldn't just disable it and say we're not going to deal with it. That is oh, that, yeah, that, 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 that AMD's is a, response to that, a lot that's of shit a poo -poo on solution. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's a shit solution. It should never the default should never be if you're setting the power uh, limit to 150 watts. The default shouldn't be no, the car's just going to draw 420. Yeah, no, just. No. <laughs> so you've heard it from the Linux community. Just remove the ability to fuck with power completely on Linux. Or keep it in. Nope, completely. And, Let's get rid of uh, it. Let people do it both since they can already do it. You know what? We're going to uh, make it an RNG. Under. <laughs> just RNG, whatever. Hey. No, you just you <laughs> stick your finger in the socket. And if you survive, you get, you get to the boot process continues. Mm. You just got to pre press Y for did you survive? With your with your crispy finger. All right. Uh, last week we talked about the demise of Yozo, the Switch emulator. Nintendo came in knocking, and they went, "Peace, we're out, we're done." They, they got on their motorcycle and drove off. Gone, man. They're like, <laughs> sounds like a good time to pack it in, boys. Well, well, well. No one predicted. <laughs> no one. Absolutely. Nope. Open source. What's that? Never heard of. Never it. heard of it. It's not the way it works. Uh. There's been a fork, and the popular fork, according to Ars Technica, is Sue You. <laughs> a little good bit name. on the nose, that Love one. <laughs> good, good name. Yeah. This says the project's in a legal gray area we're trying to work our way out of. Yeah, don't, don't worry. Oh, about oh yeah. Them, the, yeah. The, the, the person they consulted has claimed three years of law school. Not one, not two, <laughs> but three years of law school. Fill, uh, fills me with confidence. So, this, uh, they, they, they got a good hub. Uh, this arose out of a passion for Switch emulation and a desire not to see years of impressive work by the Yuzu team go to waste, which all things I agree with. Uh, so, how are they not going to get? sued into a smoldering crater the size of um, I don't know what, what uh, Hyrule yeah there we go words pick a, pick a crater the, the KT boundary I yes don't know. that thing man uh, so <laughs> here's their here's their plan they're going to avoid monetization altogether smart move when dealing with emulation they're not going to do any step by step guides to show you how to actually use the tool which is all right old move yeah cotton. sure sure and I was like reading over this and I'm like I wanted to get excited about it, but this won't womp. <laughs> Yuzu's gone. Oh, that, why, why is that not even there? They got rid of the archive? I guess they DMCA'd them. Wow. Nintendo rolls hard, son. That's Nintendo malicious. So, like, go to the yeah. way back. <laughs> Go to archive.org and like, no, you remove that shit there too. I thought, All I, of the well, entries yeah, that yeah, they could yeah, find, yeah, the, remove well, the, yeah, the, the, that, that was probably That was probably the user guys who did that. Because yeah, that was they're like, part of the deal. I was like, yeah, yeah they yeah. pay us $2.4 million. Um, but yeah, it, uh, like the person who forked this kind of came across as thing. I could be completely wrong. Like the idea person is like, hey, I'm going to do this and then set this up. But somebody's got to do that at least and get some attention and popularity. Well, no one will hold. Like it's been forked. People are showing up to work on it though. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the other thing they need to do that uh, the Nintendo suit alleged is uh, Yuzu was generating their own title dot keys. Mm -hmm. And so now they need a way to extract legitimate title dot keys uh, from various games, various systems, but they can't tell you how to do it either. So, again, it, cre it creates a bit of a logistical problem of here. We, 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 we can make this thing, but we can't tell you how to use it. But. Ooh, yeah. ooh, do, do you think we'll get another um, angry uh, email, uh, I mean, post on Reddit? Mm. 
because there's no binaries to unload. Yeah, I'm not a fucking stupid programmer, you nerds. stupid nerds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit was for a stalker app, too. That was the oh, thing. <laughs> dude, uh, build it yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty dope. They, I mean, I'm trying to find the link to the... Uh, I was on the GitHub thing a minute ago, and I can't find it. Sue you. Is it, is it the, the first one? The first one? Burp, burp. There we go. Nope, yeah. nope. Open source nonprofit switch emulator. Come at us, bro. Uh, 67 dedicated. If it keeps on going, man, and you know, more than likely, more than likely, the people that have been rolling deep with Yuzu all these years, they're, they're going to find a way to help out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Although the, the thing that kind of st- sticks out to me, the whole thing is starting with the name, Sue You. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit on the nose. Someone really wants Nintendo Senpai to notice them one way or another. Because I, okay, uh, maybe I was wrong last week when I said the T Post Anteater should be Web Archive. Maybe that they should. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 they very clearly want Nintendo to pay attention to them. I don't know why, but they do. Well, because well, like I, I think they don't really have a choice, right? If you try to do this, if you try to do this behind the scenes, then that just gives Nintendo ammunition to be like, ah, yes, you are definitely trying to do something illegal. If they do this in the open and they say, hey, we're not taking money. Hey, we're doing everything. I, we're, we're not doing the things that you alleged in the other lawsuit. Look at us. We're not actually doing it. I think this so is, is, that this what is their strategy. They're like, okay, thanks for the playbook. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got rules now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 th- I think this is what, I think that's what this is. All right. I wish them the best of luck, man, because like, hey. Yeah. You know, make it doubly hard because the interest that I have in like Switch emulation is very similar to Jordan. Jordan, you bought a Switch, like you own Switch games. And at some point I might too, because like it's going to be the only viable way for me to ever play like Bayonetta 2 or Bayonetta 3. And, uh, but I don't want to play them on some old busted ass mobile phone hardware. You know, I want to play them on PC with a real controller and like HD and oh, I want that option available and I don't want to have to go to super sketchy.ru.cx. Oh, did you hear a Cloudflare got rid of a, they dropped the .tk? Really? Yeah. How many oh. people had a TK web zone back in the day? Uh, you had to, because other, other, otherwise you had a GeoCity. It was free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you got some ads on your website, but whatever. .tk. Up next, Open Broadcaster Studio. 30.1. No, no Jordan. Twitch enhanced broadcasting. Oh, not man. not here. Boom. Not at all. <laughs> go go, go, go somewhere else. That boondoggle piece of nightmare fuel Twitch is, still has. And like, we haven't heard a peep out of that ever since they announced it. I was like, that's going to be a goddamn dumpster fire. You have no idea the level oh, of yeah. bullshit that you're going to try to introduce on people who can barely count to fork. Um, <laughs> you, you're going to have them multi stream from home and have them, you fools, just enable AV1. So, Couple of things in this. Uh, the big ones, the big ones. Pipewire video sources are now a thing for you wacky kids out there running the Wayland. That should simplify your life quite a bit. AV1 encoding for Vapi and WebRTC. We talked about the WebRTC, I believe, last week or the week before. So we're going to get really crisp. We're going to be looking at each other's pores in a few more months. Um, PCM audio fragmented for MP4 and Move. That's important. Let me tell you why that's important. You remember, um, maybe both of you have seen the big warning message because you remember how the default was a uh, FLV mm, and yeah. you changed it to mm-hmm. a real container <laughs> and it'd be like, it oh no, don't do that because if uh, your computer explodes, uh, we'll break your video file. Fragmented MP4 MOVs don't suffer that problem. You can just chop them at any point and they can pick it right back up. So that's good that that's going to be the default. And, um, PCM audio is in that now on top of everything else. And the default is now regular, ordinary, real boy containers, not something originally designed in flash video. Good times. <laughs> Happy That's, to see it. I, I, I like that they're uh, uh, having the uh, AV1 HDR enabled for HEVC on the, the stable version. And both VA API and WebRTC also support mm-hmm. AV1. At the same time, uh, Twitch is still munching on whatever glue stick NVIDIA fed them. 
And well, not allowing people to stream. <laughs> well, it, it, uh, no, it's, they're munching on on the, the piles of money that they saved from the free labor of NVIDIA engineers just doing their AV1 ingest for them. Yeah. They just did like this boondoggle of like whatever, like we haven't even, they have not brought this back up, gentlemen, since the announcement. They're like, yes. <laughs> Is like it's dumb. You have no idea. Like that, re- the the amount of like technical know how, no matter how idiot proof you make that, is such a hurdle. Like it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare. One thing, YouTube. If, if you defeat the YouTube mini boss of setting up your live stream, you just stream AV one, mm-hmm. and you're done. You got to bite the bullet. But I understand where Twitch is coming from, and it's not about money or anything like that. Uh, what's his name? Uh, DJ, whatever his name is now, the new CEO of Twitch. Um, not DJ Wheat. No, they, they, they didn't. They didn't give him CEO of Twitch. <laughs> now it's a DJ, whoever his name is. I follow him on Twitch. It's weird because like it's the Twitch CEO, but he just like fucks around and does live streams. He has like two hundred people watching him. It's um. Anyway, back to the point is um. What was my point, gentlemen? Uh, Twitch and Twitch, hacks. Twitch money. Why? The, why? Why? Money. Why are they not you, doing thank everyone? You. Senior moment. Awesome. <laughs> so. He, he came out and he said, we got the fucking numbers, dude. Everybody watches, like, by large on mobile or small screen. You know, they have your dimensions on, like, mm-hmm. or whether or not you have it in a tab. And he's like, people are not watching your stream, despite what you w- might want to believe, on a dedicated monitor on a big screen or anything like that. And he's mm-hmm. like, that, that's why we're not really bothering with it right now. We know most of you, most people watching your stuff, watching a little monitor. You know? Yeah, doesn't most make people that big a deal. Consume their media nowadays on their phones, and even I—I I speak for myself. Even when I have a live stream on, mm-hmm. it's in the background <laughs> because yeah, I have other windows on it, and I have a video game on the other monitor. And even that yeah, when I'm watching Twitch Discord. on my tablet, I got it in the little pop-out player in a little tiny window while I'm doing some yeah. If if I ever have like a Twitch or a YouTube video as like full screen, it is because like it is on a separate computer that is like playing that while I'm doing something else, right? Like, unless I'm pixel hunting for something, someone has like a comparison of pixel peeping. Yeah. Mm. Like, uh, the AV one comparison that, uh, Intel had for the arc, right. Uh, when they did like the, uh, AV one encoding and they had, uh, I think one of the games that they used was Elden ring. So it's like, okay, let's just put that full screen. Cause I've played that game. I know what I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's it. That's the only instance. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Good, good luck. Just, just enable AV1 and just, come on. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, c- good. Can, can, I, can I not use X264 on my CPU anymore? Can I just take advantage of my wonderful GPU's ability? <laughs> do it. Just send high quality video. Straight to Bring you. me the encoders. I'll do it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> facts, get racks, get facts. What the facts? In the year 2403, war were beginning. No, it's Fex 2403. It's the new release that's out. A lot of cool new things with this release. Uh, some performance games. What's Fex? It, it is a uh, x86 emulator that allows you to run x86 binaries on ARM CPUs. Uh, and x86 you, 64 too. <laughs> uh, yes, this is this is true. Um, and so, um, as uh, yeah, so as opposed to box 86, box 64, uh, this this is the other this is the other uh, big CPU emulator. Yeah, and a uh, couple big, uh, couple big gains here. They fixed some Steam bugs, which uh, Pedro will tell you about in a little bit. Uh, there is also an interesting little bit about how um, on x86 processors and x86 64 processors, there's a cycle CPU counter or CPU cycle counter that operates uh, on at one to two gigahertz generally on desktop. On ARM, it runs at a much lower frequency because it do- they don't need to run it at such a thing. And this was causing uh, CPU to wait, uh, or was causing uh, Unreal Engine 5 games to wait for for inordinate amounts of time for uh, for the cycle to complete. And so now they've introduced a scaler that multiplies that by 180 or 128, which should now make things a little bit more smooth. Uh, there's more x86 thunks so that you can run your uh, 64-bit binaries on your x86 or on your six binaries on your um 64 bit systems and a bunch of syscalls they did a bunch of analysis and they realized hey we don't actually need to emulate these we can just pass them through directly to the kernel so now there's a bunch of overhead that just got removed so that's cool yep and uh, the, the the thing that got me was the uh, the the steam um because 
one of the like specific fixes that they had for running Steam specifically through FX was they were just sending the Chromium disable sandbox command so that the Steam client would run without the sandbox. But Valve, since they moved uh, how the Chromium embedded framework is managed now, and Shit's it's still inside, broken on Nvidia Valve. It, yeah, it, it's still running. Uh, it's all running inside the um, the runtime now. And they are, because of that, because they're in control of the runtime, they have full control of the sandbox, they just disable the Chromium sandbox, and uh, apparently sending the double disable sandbox command was causing Steam to just crash. Uh, so my question is, can this be exploited? Someone more clever than I look into that. Uh, they also, apparently, Steam as a um, wonderful piece of software that it is, it was starting up a bunch of threads to do things like compiling shaders, uh, setting up uh, the prefix when you start a game with Proton, like everything, it starts up its own thread and then kills it once, as soon as it's done. But Fex wasn't letting go of the memory for those threads and it was causing a bit of a runaway scenario in, ter in terms of memory leakage all the way through. So they've fixed that now. They're aware of it and they see it and they're Is fixing it as it comes. Pedro, I got an Apple. I can install some more. Wait. <laughs> hmm. I, I can go uh, buy a new Apple no. computer. I can buy another. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're really, really good with the uh, BGA soldering. <laughs> Again, like we bring this up. I at least try to bring it up every time we talk about facts. Uh, we're just like, okay, yeah, that's, that's a neat, that's a neat party trick, man. You got something that can run x86 on, uh, like you know, on overblown your Raspberry Pi, Pi right? Yeah. And like. This this is still laying the groundwork, and they're doing they're doing the gritty work. They're very forward thinking, because by the time it's not too far away. Because I keep posting about it, every little bit of news I get about that new eighty watt fire breathing um Snapdragon Snapdragon yeah. coming out, dude. Like ARM desktop SOCs that are going to be legit. We're probably only like one or two generations out from like really having something semi viable here, and uh, a lot of this. Stuff is going to be sorted by then. Yeah. You know, you're, it's going you're, to be great to have something. Your, your X86 Apple. will just work, <laughs> right? On, uh, and <laughs> like, oh, that that'll be that'll be crazy. When you're yeah. running your Windows game through <laughs> Proton Steam on, on, on my ARM, ARM CPU. CPU. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I did. I dedicated like twenty of my eighty ARM CPUs to deal with yeah, this. Right. So yeah, it's like, like, well, there's a five percent performance hit. Uh, so I'm getting 5% less performance than if I was playing it on Windows on x86. Uh. Oh, right. Here, let me, let me just put it in performance mode, 80 watts. Yeah, yeah right. Let, let me add an expansion card. So that's another 128 CPUs in yeah. here. I mean, it's going to be our own version of like Rosetta stuff like this, man. Yeah. Like, and like, just, just, I love that it's there. I love that it's there and it's coming and it's hard to look past x86. But I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like at it some has point. to happen. There's going to be that time, probably like, you know, unless you're in the hospice right now, like within our lifetimes, where you're going to like, okay, do, do, do I want to buy that? First, you're, 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 you're going to buy a Snapdragon laptop from Something, your Dell. Yeah. 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 And you're going to be like, ooh, that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, so, so here, here's the question because I, this, I guess, I guess this is more, more targeted at Pedro than Ven. That How first, th that, that, that first generation ARM laptop comes out with like the, 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 the beefy parts. Do you, do you go buy that right away? No. <laughs> uh, laptops, when you buy them on a release, they tend to be very, very expensive. And um, I, I already bought my first generation ARM laptop. It's called a Pinebook Pro. <laughs> no, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about a non-crappy one, though. I'm talking about <laughs> one that you can actually run software on. It's, it's, it's a... What is it? It's a Rockship uh, RK3399. Okay. Uh, which is about... Raspberry that's, that's, Pi four it, levels of yeah that's that's that's, that's what's in my Nano Pi so yeah yeah so yeah it, it's passable as uh, for a laptop that you're only using to go on the internet maybe not watch YouTube videos because YouTube's a fucking shit show on, <laughs> on lower power CPUs uh, but if you're just browsing the internet doing emails doing work it's fine perfectly passable <laughs> that's probably gonna be like the next big thing though like when you bring that up man how hard even like a modern raspberry pi 5 struggles to brute force things like video 
when all of that stuff is there on the SOC for like 8K decoding, which it can yeah. do, like that's frustrating. Like Broadcom's always had a problem with Raspberry Pi 4s with acceleration. Yeah. Fun times. Tell us, are you looking forward to our risky future? Will you be first in line to buy whatever passes for a semi affordable x86 desktop replacement? You can do that. You can leave us a comment on this YouTube video or wherever it may be. If you're one of our patrons, leave it on there and I guarantee you we'll make sure it gets in the show. But the best way to get a hold to us, to send us in some mail, send us in some messages that we might read on this very show is to head over to linuxgamecast.com, smash that contact button, and read the page. I'll leave the rest up to you. I think you're a bright person. Maybe you're not. Who knows? We'll find out. But last week, we were talking about syncing and freeing. And would anybody ever buy a monitor just because it had free sync? And we said, no, that's crazy talk. That's people well, like that don't exist. Turns out Peter's crazy. Uh, Peter Peter <laughs> Peter Ryzen from YouTube and says opposite to most gator gamers. Apparently, gators, I bought nope. my no, yes, yeah. Schnappy's back and he's he's with a vengeance. Um, apparently, I bought my I bought my monitor partially because it had free sync support. Since 2016 2017, I decided that my next monitor must have free sync support. I could never game with VSync on, and I legitimately quit playing one game because the tearing drove me nuts. I upgraded from 1080p60 to 2560 by 4440 at 144 after I assembled a new system. Also, the colors improved enough to make the upgrade worth it. Over the course of the next big step is a non-LCD monitor. Hopefully, 5 to 10 years from now, a 4K OLED with around 30 or 32 inch will be reasonably priced. 500 to 600 bucks? Yeah, I hope so too. That would be sweet, assuming that at the time, graphics cards can handle 4K with good performance. I mean, they, they kind of can now. Depends depends on the game. If you don't 4K turn on ray 60, tracing. 4K 60, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no ray tracing. 4K 60, I think, yeah, most we, current we, gen cards I mean, can we, do that. <laughs> we literally just talked about how turning on ray tracing really does nothing except make yeah. the game run worse. Well, I mean, <laughs> AMD and NVIDIA, like, they switched gears in the marketing department because, like, the 30 series and the previous 60 series uh, AMD GPUs and NVIDIA, the 30 series... They were like, 4K gaming, brah, come on, you can 8K game all over these things. And now you yeah, have like 40 NVIDIA series in the, the XTS, AMD, and they're like, <laughs> 1080p ray tracing is awesome, dude. It's like, <laughs> you gotta love it, man. Yeah. I yeah, I remember NVIDIA, like a big part of the uh, the marketing push for the 3090 was, yeah, 8K gaming. And then, of course, <laughs> uh, Gamers Nexus was like, okay, let's let, let, let's put that to the test. No, fuck you. <laughs> well, n- number one, let me let me spend like over a thousand dollars on an 8K monitor to, to verify this. God, man. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my I, 22 I, inch I, 8K I'm monitor. looking forward to like OLED or NanoLED. NanoLED has a uh, like a lot more of my um, quantum whatever they. I don't know, there's like a billion names for it, but like OLED's dope. OLED's still wicked expensive. Not as wicked expensive as it used to be, but. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm still in that boat. I'm glad that you went out, like, on free sync. If you had it on, I, I wouldn't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, you would know. <laughs> as soon as you started a, a game that the loading screens were at a lower frame rate and the game was at, you know, running at whatever. All I'm hearing is you pay attention to loading screens. Uh, I'm looking at the screen waiting I'm for not, the game to load. I, yes. I immediately <laughs> fuck off and start doing something on a tablet or check an email. I, like, I'm not, like, they're like, hang on, loading screen, grab the popcorn. I try to race it. No, from one a side loading of the screen comes up, and I'm sitting there waiting, and I'm looking Pedro's at the screen. Pedro's computer is so slow, it has to load stuff. Uh, when you're playing, <laughs> uh, I'm playing uh, New World, uh, when you're playing an MMO made on the Lumberyard, aka CryEngine, mm-hmm. uh, after Amazon uh, Mac, <laughs> got bro. their hands on it. Well, hold on, what's it called now? The open source game engine? The open game engine? Ogi? Shit, uh, it's not like I don't know. I, the Linux Foundation it. owns it. Yes, yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. I don't formerly remember the new name. formerly known as Lumberyard. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, no, that engine, it, especially when you're loading into a town that has a bunch of players, those loading screens, they take a while. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, I noticed it because the loading screens on that game, um, they the the frame rate comes down to like one FPS then jumps to like 20 and then comes back down to two FPS and it, it goes in and out of the window of free sync that you can see the monitor refresh. Now, no, I have ABC one, two, three, in the background of my head. <laughs> 
I didn't think it would stay up. <laughs> it means I need to wash my hair. I think Trojan's got handlebars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm an anime character. Clearly. A Canadian Sugoi. TV socking. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up. Before we get out of here, we want to thank a couple of people. If you want to uh, hook us up, you can tap our support button over at linuxgamecast.com. We do have a patron, how we finance our little dog and chainsaw show. By joining that, you get a bunch of bonus stuff we throw at your direction. Like I said, I'm going to have the sneak peek for this passive NH1P1 cooler coming out a bit earlier for you guys to take a look at. And of course, you get the live and uncut version of this show. If you're listening to the podcast, there's usually like two and a half to three more hours of it that we make available as a podcast. We got LibrePay, we got PayPal, we got Bitcoin, but we also got Wish Zones, Amazon wish list, where we put stuff that we may or may not use, but it's up to you to ship it our way. If you're like, yeah, I would like to inflict that with you because you can include a note, which yes. we will have to read, which sounds horrifying. Reading is hard, man. I don't want to do it. It is. Uh, we got a merch <laughs> store. If you want to put some LGC on you, we got some t-shirts. They're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. We got some mugs and some other things. And of course, the Amazon storefront, if you're curious about anything in the studio, which I'm broadcasting from, it's an itemized list. You don't have to buy anything off Amazon. You can just get it. And like, hey, I wonder what that is. Oh, there's the thing. I'm going to go buy it on wherever, you know. Uh, What's the new thing that kids buy? No, not Wish has been replaced. What's the new one? Uh, Timu. Timu, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Humble Affiliate. I do want to thank Don M, and I want to thank Frizera. Frizera. I keep reading that as Frieza, but yeah, it's, 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 it's Frizera. It's, yeah, yeah I, I was, that, <laughs> listen, that was my one attempt for not calling it calling you Frieza. From now on, it's Frieza. Frieza! <laughs> But I do uh, want to thank, uh, I, I fucked up earlier this week, gentlemen. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> I fucked up. That's what it did. <laughs> um, I just got back from my run. So it was like maybe 5, 5.15 in the morning my time. And um, I come in, hop in the shower, hop out. And I'm like, oh, see what's going on on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's cool. Uh, they got like a little new uh, little baby uh, video card thing. I'm like, all right, that's pretty neat. I posted it in our Discord. I was like, that's cool. And I get a message and just like, so do you think that thing worth anything? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe it might be interesting. Like, whatever. And you get that replay. Like, where are you going to find out, fucko? <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that, that's a lot to like process. <laughs> <laughs> at, at five o'clock in the morning, yeah. No, I'm like, it, uh, it just posted. All right, fine, fuck it. What I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is the most powerful GPU in the Sparkle! world. Sparkle! It's so tiny. The Arc A310. Pedro ah. does not require external power. This is 50 yes. watts. It has. <laughs> in single slot, too. <laughs> not one, but two mini display ports. Ah, and so you yeah, got, gotta go find find a mini display port cable. <laughs> I already got a couple, <laughs> but more importantly, gentlemen, it's got AV1 encoder built into it. Mm. That's the big one. <laughs> AV1 encoder, all this in a package, ninety nine dollars. So basically, what I said to a lot of you out there is, AV1 encoder, ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. Add on AV1 encoder. You got an older AMD, you got an older uh, NVIDIA card. AV1 encoder, single slot, doesn't require extra power. Because $99 is what I would have paid for an AV1 encoder. Now, the um, 50 watt TDP. This is going to be interesting to play around with for two reasons. Now, the initial thing, thank you, Arthur. And I don't know what I did with a note, but I'll get you next week, man, because I know where it's at. <laughs> I know where it's at, man. And I hopefully you said something horrific on it, um, but I'll get you next week. Remind me. But the two things for this card. One, I want to see, is it worth buying a $99 Arc A310, this little guy, because it's super low profile. So it will go in the thermal note box that is Jordan's PC, that little tiny evil hey. little thing which has a 5600G. Is this a worthwhile upgrade for like ultra budget gaming on Linux? If you just have integrated graphics, like 5600G laying around, like, is it any better? Like for, for 1080p gaming, let's be realistic. Do you think we'll get a performance boost? Yeah, it, it will. It's a dedicated GPU. Yeah, but it's it also Intel. 
Yeah. Yeah. But that was so, it's so, a dedicated so, 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 GPU versus a Vega. A310. Yeah, A310. it's a Vega built-in embedded GPU uh, on the Ryzen. Very well supported, though. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be spinning some furry donuts <laughs> on top of everything else. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think just from the fact that it is a dedicated GPU, it will perform not a lot better. But a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, so according to according to Passmark, uh, what 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 does what does this bullshit say? Oh. Um, theoretically, yes. Huh. On Linux. dedicated GPU. On, on yes. Linux. Yeah. <laughs> Versus integrated. Running Proton. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, like, okay, so so then with, with Intel, there's the other multiplier. Does it run better, and do, what does it look like? Because, you know, performance numbers are one thing, but if it's, like, fucking Smirovision, if, like, the <laughs> there's, like, distortions and shit, like, that's that's a different story, right? I happen to know a guy who's got some benchmark graphs and shit and the ability to capture what you've requested. Yes. So... Uh, that's going to be one of the things I'm going to test, man. Like, this, this... Thank you, Arthur, because, like, this is genuinely going to be a helpful fucking data point to people I'm like fuck all right because the three of us we don't fucking know and like the three people should fucking know it's going to be one of us uh so let's get that sorted and then i'm going to come back around for another video and another article about using this bad boy as an av1 add-in card because if you I don't mean. know like <laughs> you can just throw in another gpu because you've Years ago, years ago, when I had it, that uh, 770 laying around, I was using that as a bonus card with another NVIDIA card just to use that for the NV encode. Well, red etherically, we should just be able to use the AV1 portion of this card in a, like, thread booper. Now we'll see what that looks like and how much of a pain in the ass that is to set up and if it's going to be, like, a worthwhile thing because you never know. And can you get Twitch to ingest it? Fuck no, but I can... Get it to work it's on YouTube. It's not an NVIDIA card, so no. <laughs> no an NVIDIA 40 series card, so no. <laughs> no, man. Like, I, I can paint it green. Like, see if it'll yeah, 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 yeah. So put, 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 put a RTX sticker on it. 4010. <laughs> yeah. So Arthur and I say to you, uh, I'll benchmark. You pick two games. You can pick two games because I'll probably do like five games, but you can pick two games. They can be Proton, Nata, whatever, but they could have benchmarks built into them. And let me know in Discord before the end of next week when I get some time to stick this thing together if i got some time on wednesday because scale is still doing its thing so we're not gonna be doing a weekly daily wednesday i might do a little bit of a stream just like the initial um just plug the damn thing in and see if it goes burr mm. yeah yeah <laughs> like like does this even work with uh yeah because we have no idea this is a brand new thing man like it should work even if you have the NVIDIA I don't say installed. shit like that anymore, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> That's the thing. GLVND. I say shit like that. Fate goes, hang on a minute. And it starts rolling the up its sleeves, dude. <laughs> I, I, pl I plugged the in my Neutral Invi Dispatch should very much account for that. Because <laughs> I plugged in Debian my 12, AMD card. The first thing I'm going to have to do, uh, I'm going to compile a uh, kernel 5.8 or 6.8. Yeah. Yeah. 5.8 five, eight, eight, five, eight. a little dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like yeah, I said, I, I, plugged in, I plugged in. I plugged in my seventy eight hundred without even uninstalling the NVIDIA drivers, and shit just works. My yeah. I, I haven't even removed my XORG conf. That's how. That's that's how shit just works. So, I mean, if you're using Wayland now, you don't need. To. I, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not for this right See, now. Then, but then like, shit's gonna get start. It's gonna become to like one of those things. Like this actually might be helpful if it works out because I was talking about that. We're doing Trackmania. Come play Trackmania with us. We do it on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, if you're a Twitch sub or patron, just link up to our Discord. Everything's pinned in the Trek Manies and channel. We get together. But we're starting to do RPG maps, which, you know, basically the Dark Souls maps and castles and shit. And those are huge maps. The 5600G, struggling, man. Struggling. Oh, that might be one of the tests. Like, to see if we can uh, get away. And, like, how loud is this bad boy going to get? Can you throw yeah, a, it a thin on it? single slot fan blower style? So it yeah. might get a little loud. <laughs> might no, not not in that ginormous case. <laughs> well, once I mean, if you have the a fan pointed directly at the uh, breathy holes, it might be fine. <laughs> I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to wrap us up for tonight. Thanks for joining in, but I do believe we got a good place left for Brad. <laughs> Let's cue that music. 
You can always find this horse and pony show. Horses and ponies are the same thing, right? They taste yes. the same, right? Yeah. Anyway, kicking off right here on Twitch live, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. It's on the schedule. But if you are a patron, if you are a Death Note or above, we do the pre-pre-super shows and audio. And if you're an executive producer, you get a video feed. But don't worry. You'll get that tomorrow if you want to go back and rewatch it. And if you're like, fuck you guys, I just want to consume content. Not a problem. Wait a week. Go to our Uncut channel. A week later, you get everything for free. We're good like that. But if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on all the social medias, baby. I'm on the Zitters, on the X's, whatever you want to call it. At Vin Stone. At Vin on mass.linuxteamcast.com. And uh, just type in Vin on if you're on the blue sky. I'm, I'm there, technically. I'm Fluffy Long Slopping. You can follow me on Mastodon at Frojo at mass.linuxteamcast.com. On blue sky at frojo.bsky.com, dot app, whatever. And uh, at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Yeah. And I'm at an account at four with the actual number four uh, at mass.linuxgamecast.com. That's the social network that I'm in nowadays. The last Poke at me, ever. I'll poke back. <laughs> the only one. Yes. I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to do it. We got to thank our lovely, lovely people flying through space. Riding that sandworm into the stars. We gotta thank our advisors, Omegas and Arthur, and our executive producers, Atom- uh, yeah, Atomic House, Barbara, Scott Michaud, Mike G, Drummer, Tomaj, Hakeem, David Eship, Ian Kurducky, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Little Nicky fans, or yeah, Little Nicky fans, Chicago kicks ass, uh, Super Duster, Empty, and Glorisek Roll. Yeah. And the sea monsters from No Rider X, Machina, Treji, Ferris, and Uda, Justin, Darkwing, System T, Dead Sing, Joe, DeCrazy, Kim, and Ogi One. With a Death Notes, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Kim, Chris, Pebble, Steve, I see Jill, a Death Benjamin, Note. Who gets, get a couple of these uh, cheerlings, Graf, Tom, look at this Graf, <laughs> Graf, Tim, Piper, okay. <laughs> and of course, all of our fine upstanding cannibals, Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, Drew, Aldis, Noctilus, John, E. Shep, Gavitron, you know, DSN, enjoy Aromatic, Underscore, Dev, and Kai, Joy, right? We Until did. next week, ladies and gentlemen, get out there and, uh... I don't know. Anger and confuse uh, new Linux users. Buy them in video card. <laughs> Go infuriate Nintendo. <laughs> Suzu. Yeah. Identify everyone. See you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>